Hey, what's up? It's Jake, and we're going to finish off our section on modules talking about module versioning. So um, I've made a new folder on my computer called Project Aardvark. That's what this is going to be called. And this project is basically just going to be taking our all the things we've built so far and moving them into Git repos. So why are we doing that? Well, let's talk about module versioning. So let's say we've done all this work and we want to update our module, but when we update our module, it's updating it in staging and it's updating it in production. And we really don't want it to do that. We've got some environment variables, or not environment variables, but like Terraform imports and variables and things like that that we're using. And that's all great, but um, if we update something like a, a version we're, we're working on a new version of the module and we don't want that to be live yet in prod we want it to go to staging and eventually update it in prod that's a normal thing people do right well now you're screwed because we don't have a way to do that and the way to do that is with module versioning so there's a couple different ways to do it you can do it with um you know any number of different remote state versioning kind of things but the easiest and most common you're going to see is with Git, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, whatever you're into. Um, and so what we need to do is I need to create a couple repos, which is what I did. I made a live repo. Okay, go take a look. There's me. You can make a, um, I made a live repo and I made a modules repo. So my live is gonna be where all my environments are and my modules is gonna be where my Terraform modules live, okay? So what does that mean? What that means is we are going to do a git clone of my two repos into project aardvark and it should make a live and a modules directory. Okay, so let's let's give this a whack. All right, so let's do live first. So let me do a little copy copy action here and then we'll go git clone Here's the URL, clone it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for modules. All right, so now I have live, now I have modules, and they should just have a readme in them, which is great. So now what I'm gonna do is, I copied all my files over beforehand, um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this web server cluster folder, the whole thing, and I'm gonna stick it inside of my, mo my new modules repo. And that'll probably take a second. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with global prod and stage. So here's global. I'm going to copy that, paste it in live. And then I'm going to copy prod and I'm going to paste it in the live. And then I'm going to copy stage and paste it into live. All right, so now I have all my files in there. If we go to modules, my web server cluster looks good. If I go to global, I've got my DynamoDB tables. Um, I've got my prod stuff, that looks good. I got my stage stuff, that's all there. That looks good. Um, but I, you notice, no, no, we're in here in this live is my modules, right? So only my modules have my modules in them and this is just all the modules that i created so that's the one that i want so now i can go ahead and get rid of this temp live uh directory that i made i can get rid of this temp module directory that i made and what we're left with is what we want so this is exactly what you should have okay nice and clean so now I've got this project Aardvark. I have two repos in here. I've got live and modules. So that's all got to get pushed, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do an initial push here. Let's go to live and just do git add all the things. And did I put my git ignore? I have a git ignore here. Did I put a git ignore in? here probably not because i forgot that's okay let's just copy it real quick copy uh live git paste Pwah. save close get reset 
Okay, get add things. Okay, now I'm going to do a git commit dash m initial addition of all tf files and folders. Git push. I'm on the main branch. Sweet. Let's go back and let's go to modules. We're going to get add all this. I'm going to get commit all this and get push. So at least now all of my repos are up to date. So if I go back here and I do a refresh, I mean, this is my live. Here's all of my live stuff, which is awesome. Um, and then I've got, yeah, okay, it just looks funny. And then I've got my modules repo and my modules repo has all my stuff in it. Cool. So that worked out well. All right, so why on earth am I doing this? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a tag into my repo that says, hey, this module, this module right now, as it stands, is version whatever, one, right? And then I'm going to make some changes to it, and then I'll make a, a version two. And we're going to make prod run on version one, and we're going to make stage run on version two. How you do that is um, in your live environment, if you look at stage, web server cluster, main, you'll see that we've been using web server cluster, and then I had a source that was using that local web server cluster folder that I had, right? So we're going to change this to the URL of my Git repo, and this will be the URL for version 2, because staging is like my new and improved cool thing that we want to get that hasn't been approved yet. And prod, we're actually, it's going to be something like this, except this is wrong. Um, we're going to we're gonna put the source Git URL for version 1, okay? So that's that's what we're going to do. So go ahead right now and make your Git repos and clone them down and move all your folders over, push them up. If you want to do it from the command line, do your Git init, Git add, Git commit, Git remote add origin, all that other stuff. And then uh, once you're done, then come back. So pause the video, do all that, and I'm going to go get my URLs and get that ready, and I'll pause my video and wait for you. I'll seriously pause it. Okay, I had to play with this for a second, but I finally got it to work. So, um, I even went so far as to, and this is where I got the answer, by the way, I didn't have get colon colon in front of my URL, so that's what was wrong. Um, I made a release, too, which is kind of fun. But anyways, um, if you just grab your your HTTPS URL, you don't really need to use SSH can if you want. Um, you just do get colon colon and then the URL. So it'll be github.com slash the name of your account or organization slash the name of the repo dot git slash slash and then the name of the folder that's in there or in this case the module. Um, and then a question mark ref equals and then the version number and that will get you the version number that you want. After you do that, because you have to get this initialized, you have to run a Terraform in it and then it will download the module. So instead of it downloading the module from local, you can see here it downloaded my module from the interwebs, which is kind of cool, right? So that's what that is. And and that seems to work. So I'm going to update prod as well. Make sure this is, oh, for the love. Hang on, let me copy this again. Copy all of it. Paste all of it. All right, so let me meander on over to prod. Is that the one that I want? Yeah, it's the one that I want. So let's do a Terraform in it. And this should initially initialize the new module. 
initialize our back end. Sweet, so now we've got our Terraform state file in S3, we got our lock files in DynamoDB, we got our source for our module coming from GitHub. So that's uh, less crap you have to manage all in here because it's all in there. And then if I wanted to um, make a new version of this in the modules here, like let's say I'm in my module and I really want to add something. All right, let's check this out here. Yeah, let's say that I want to add um, a comment, just something really simple. Hey, this is version E0.0.2. Boom. Now I have a different version of it, right? And I saved it. So from here, let me just go back. I'm going to do a git add all the things. Git commit commit dash m boom. Uh, new version is out, yo. V0.0.2. Let's do a git push. And then I'm going to do a git tag dash a. Uh, v0.0.2 um, with a message of, is it message? Message? I can never remember this. Yeah. Message of uh, second release of web server cluster Terraform module. And then I'm going to do a git push dash dash follow tags version 2 now if we go look and get I should have two tags so I've got one release and I should have two tags where are my let me look at my release asset 2 compare 1 all right, so now what I can do is I can go to prod web server main and make sure that's on one. And then I can go to stage web server main and put this on version two. And if I do that, I have to reinitialize Terraform and see if version two made it. Okay. Cool. So now prod is on version one and staging is on version two. I'm using the same web server, but you can use um, either tags or you can use branches. So if you wanted to do um, a branch, that's a thing you could do. That's what I was checking out. Um, like you can do this one here, like develop if that's the name of your branch. So whether it's a version or a branch, uh, a version tag or a branch or whatever, you can use that and develop off of that and build off of that and have completely isolated environments that use completely isolated dynamic variables that are all versioned and use the same exact module, but with different versions or branches of the same module. So hopefully that helps uh, clear up what module versioning is and how you would do that and it's getting pretty cool this is almost um ready to deploy something real um you need we need isolated networks like my staging environment my prod doesn't have a network at all it doesn't have a database at all so the next thing i'll probably do is i'll add in a network um module and a database module and import those and have those as sources. So I've got my web source, uh, web server module with source and then all my variables. And then I'll have a module for database and I'll have all my variables and then I'll have a module for my network and I'll have all those variables and they'll all be separate between prod and stage. And then 
and they'll all be versioned. So my network will be versioned, my database will be versioned, my web server will be versioned, all through modules, all through dynamic environment variables. I keep saying environment variables, but it's really through inputs. Um, yeah, and so now you're getting now you're getting closer. So if you have any questions about module versioning, it's really it. It's just about the the Git stuff. So um, just let me know, but make sure that you're you're being very specific and very intentional about your commits, your tags, your branches, your versions, all that stuff. And you can uh, use this to your advantage and make things a lot easier for yourself. The Some of the things that I um, hear, the criticisms I hear of Terraform are that it's too dangerous, it's easy to delete prod, it's easy to um, you know, really mess something up. It's easy to clash with other people when you're developing on a team with state and stuff like that. So I'm going to do a whole section on setting this up for production. And I'm going to do a whole section on setting this up to work with other teams because I think all those things are true, but I think most of it is because we learn Terraform as a community, but we don't really learn all of it. We just learn enough. And because of that, I think, um, we don't learn all the gotchas and the and the cool ways to get around it. I'm not saying Terraform is the end-all be-all. It's the, the tool I've chosen for provisioning, and that's what I'm going to use because um, in future videos, I'm going to be doing multi-cloud um, deployments and configurations. And so for me, Terraform made the most sense. But for you, infrastructure is code. You can use whatever you want. You can uh, use Ansible to do everything if you want to. But uh, that's pretty much it. So um, hopefully in conclusion of this entire section on modules, um, you've got a gist for how to define it and define infrastructure as code and modules. You can apply uh, all kinds of software engineering best practice, architecture best practice through how you structure your stuff, how you design your layout, how you design your, your file layout, or how you do workspaces, or how you do any of that stuff. Um, and we'll start to look at doing code reviews and automated tests and stuff like that, which will be really cool. Semantically versioning modules, um, having separate modules for each thing, breaking your infrastructure really down into fine, finely, fine, granular kind of uh, pieces. Um, you can safely try out different versions of different modules, no problem. All you got to do is update your source, easy peasy, right? You can roll back. You could roll back very easily just by going, hey, I want to be on version two. Boop, shk, Terraform in it, Terraform apply. Uh, very easy to do. Um, there are some zero downtime considerations that you'll need to take place because it can be quite destructive, um, again, if you don't build it to not be. <laughs> so, uh, but the idea with modules is you can dynamically increase your ability to provision infrastructure quickly. It's super reliable. Um, we can test the ever-loving crap out of it. Um, you can create canonical modules like my project artwork. Um, yeah, you can pretty much do anything, and modules are awesome. So you should be making a lot of them and using them for all kinds of things. So now that you see I've done this with my web server, I was even saying, well, now I need to make a module for my network, and I need to make a module for my database. Um, you could do modules for security and you can modules for user man management and user administration things like that um but you want to make it work for multiple teams so it's got to be flexible it's got to be configurable um if you've got microservices you know there's going to be well everybody wants this but everybody wants it differently but you should still be able to do it in code you should make it dynamic enough to give people a choice on how they do something um, and then code those choices and be able to, you know, like I did with web server cluster, you should be able to give somebody the choice of how to do this, how to do that. Um, and if you have a Kubernetes cluster, you should be able to give them a choice, how to do this, how to do that, um, you know, whatever. Some people want to do single instances. Some people want to do huge distributions. So it just depends and you need to be able to serve everyone. And the easier you can make this on yourself, the better, the less work it is for you, and the more consistent it is for everyone. So we all win, dev and ops. Um, yeah, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and close the book, the chapter on uh, modules, but they're super fun and they're something I'm going to use all the time. So if you have any questions, let me know. And if not, then I will see you in the next section, um, which, 
is a topic I really don't care for very much. <laughs>